Welcome to On Networking. Conversations with thought leaders in networking technologies. Hi, my name is Jay Swan. I'm here with uh, Jeff Doyle, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, IP version 4 address depletion. So, Jeff, there's been a lot of talk in the last couple of years. Uh, it's almost reaching a panic level in some sectors on the uh, uh, Im impending depletion of IPv4 address space. And I I'm still shocked at when I mention this to people in the, the sm small to medium business world that they never even heard of the problem. So maybe you could take us a, uh, back a little bit in history as to uh, what's been going on over the last few years with this issue and where we're headed in the future. Sure. Um, you know, the, the uh, IPv4 address depletion problem was actually recognized uh, in the early 1990s. Uh, there were studies saying, you know, if we keep uh, allocating IPv4 addresses at this rate, we're going to run out. I think the predictions at the time were around 1995 or so. Um, and they understood then we need to, and, and of course I, IPv4 was simply designed uh, in the 70s when no one had any idea that IP would be doing what it's doing nowadays. Uh, you know, and, and everybody thought a 32-bit address space would be enormous and you know, more addresses than we could possibly use. So there was a, a recognition that, um, that they needed a, a new version of IP that had um, enough address space to address us well into the future and of course that's the key with IPv6 is it has a 128-bit address space um, so uh, so now you know it has more IP addresses than we'll ever possibly use well where have we heard that before <laughs> um, but nevertheless for at least the foreseeable future um, but it was also recognized that it would take time uh, to develop that protocol and, and they needed short-term remedies uh, to the depletion problems at the time. Um, and there were two of those. One of them was uh, network address translation, which, uh, which pretty much everybody knows and loves nowadays. It's, it's in probably the majority of enterprise networks, uh, which simply allows you to uh, construct uh, private addresses behind a NAT device and then share a few public addresses. The, uh, addresses that are part of the pool that's in danger of being depleted. Um, I won't go into NAT bashing, so, you know, <laughs> pretty much every uh, IPv6 presentation seems to have an obligatory um, uh, section in there about why NAT is evil, and everybody's heard it, so I won't bore people with that. Uh, but the other solution, um, the short-term solution, uh, was CIDR. Um, um, uh, and uh, with with CIDR, it allowed us to break uh, the original addressing rules, which were Class A, Class B, Class C addresses, and simply allocate according to what's actually needed in there. So it gave a lot more flexibility. Um, part of that was that it also required people at that point who had uh, class B addresses to prove that they had efficiently utilized those class B addresses before they could come back to the trough and get more. Um, those short-term solutions wound up working so well that even though IPv6 was, was pretty well developed uh, through the 90s, no one really uh, uh, thought they needed it anymore. You know, everybody was just sort of warm and happy with uh, uh, with using IPv4 and uh, addressing it more efficiently with CIDR and hiding behind their NAT devices and that sort of thing, and assumed we could go on forever with that. Uh, starting in um, 2005, there were a couple of studies done, and and I should say that that uh, uh, really around 2000, uh, those of us in the IPv6 world started again uh, clanging the alarm bell, saying you know, we're going to run out of IPv4 addresses eventually. You know, if you look at everything that, uh, that's happening in the networking world, I mean, you know, we've got these drives to pretty much put everything uh, over IP now. You know, voice and video is all being delivered over IP. Um, you know, the, the mobile industry uh, with, with handsets coming out with IP capabilities, those are all requirements for addresses. And we started saying, you know, 
IPv4 can't handle this. Um, you know, looking at, at developing economies like China, for example, uh, you know, where where uh, the economy is expanding, people are, are uh, you know in this huge population wanting to get online, and again, that puts a big stress on IPv4. Uh, nobody really listened that much, um, and so you had a lot of other. Uh, uh, promises around IPv6, v you know, mobility is going to be great and security and all this kind of stuff supposedly should be better. And, you know, everybody sort of saw that as pie in the sky. But then in 2005, there were two studies done, uh, one by Tony Hain at Cisco Systems, one by Jeff Houston, uh, who now works at uh, APNIC, uh, that really looked at uh, the, the deployment rates for IPv4. And, uh, and came to some very specific uh, conclusions. And interestingly, they were originally started out as very diverse uh, uh, conclusions. The Tony, uh, Tony Haynes studies actually said, we're gonna run out of IPv4 addresses based on depletion rates, observed data around, the, uh, around allocations uh, sometime around 2008. Uh, Jeff Houston said, we're gonna run out somewhere around 2021. Uh, so really f far apart. Um, the two of them started actually debating each other and and working together, looking at the data they were using, looking at the techniques they were were using to analyze that data. And as they refined things, and as more data presented uh, itself to them, their two studies and their conclusions, basically uh, two different approaches, looking at the same data, started coming together. Uh, Haynes start, uh, conclusions of, of depletion dates started moving out a bit. Houston's uh, depletion dates started moving in, and they actually converged around uh, 2011. And it's pretty standard wisdom now that IPv4 addresses, at least at the at the highest level, um, um, it is going to run out around 2011. Uh, that means that the regional internet registries that uh, that take uh, um, slash eight blocks of addresses from the available pool, uh, they operate on about a, a 12 month supply. So it means the regional internet registries are going to run out uh, around 2012. Um, and then from there, um, there's the question of who that's going to affect. And the people it's going to affect first are people that burn through a lot of addresses, which means service providers. And worldwide, you see service providers now that all have plans for going to IPv6 because they understand that's what they've got to do just to stay in business. Um, but uh, greenfield operators, any kind of network that's coming into business uh, in the next few years, understands that if they want to get the IP, public IP addresses uh, that they need to go into business, it's going to be an IPv6 address. And so they're very focused also on IPv6. So Jeff, for those who might not be familiar with it, can you just quickly explain how IPv4 addresses get allocated currently? Sure. So at the top level, uh, you have the IANA, Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, uh, that, that actually manages uh, the pool of available addresses. So when I say that, uh, when I name the, the uh, 2011 date for running out of IPv4 addresses, I'm really talking about running out at the IANA level. Below the IANA, there are five regional internet registries, RIRs, uh, worldwide. There's uh, APNIC, which, uh, which manages um, uh, or allocates addresses throughout Asia. Uh, there's Aaron that uh, manages North America. Uh, there's RIPE that manages uh, most of Europe. There's uh, Afrinic, which is the, the newest RIR, which, uh, as the name would imply, uh, manages addresses in Africa. And, um, and then there's uh, LACNIC that does the same thing for Latin America, Central America and South America. Uh, so those five internet registries uh, assign addresses around the world. They take uh, slash eight prefixes from IANA um, and maintain a one year supply of addresses. And then service providers, um, which uh, are LIRs, local internet registries. In some cases in Asia, there's also a thing called an NIR, a national internet registry. But uh, the 
LIRs are usually large service providers, and they take address assignments from the their local RIR, uh, depending on where they're in business. And then out of those addresses, they assign addresses out to customers. So that's a bit of the dynamics of, of how IPv4 addresses are, are managed. Great, well thanks a lot. You're welcome. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.